I've been here for 15 years and five terms, uh, and, uh, and my son back home uh, needs a dad. Well, Friday shocker, Industry Minister James Moore announcing that he, too, is leaving politics. He says he wants to spend more time with his family and especially to care for his disabled son. Moore is the fifth federal cabinet minister who is not seeking re-election. And among dozens of conservative MPs, leaving politics is an exodus from the Harper government underway. Or is this just a natural cycle of renewal? after nearly a decade in office. We'll dig into all of that, but first let's bring in the CBC's National Affairs Editor, Chris Hall, who did a one-on-one -on -one interview today with James Moore. And I'd be interested in, Chris, first of all, in, we'll get to the political impact, right? But what was his mood? How, what did he say about breaking the news to the Prime Minister? Yeah, he seemed largely relieved to be able to say this. He indicated he had talked to the Prime Minister actually a couple of weeks ago. Uh, obviously, in this town, usually things like that leak out. This one didn't. Um, so he seemed uh, somber, but also relieved uh, in, in many ways for having to made this decision. Uh, and as you said, it's about, about his son, about his family. Uh, it's a long trip back and forth from British Columbia to yeah. Ottawa in return. So uh, I did ask him about, you know, what, what, what was the reason for doing it now? And here's what he said. Your departure, I said, was a surprise. You said you told the Prime Minister a few weeks ago. What, what did he say? Well, I'm not going to betray private hmm. conversations. But look, Stephen Harper is someone who has always understood um, the importance of family uh, and the importance of respecting everybody's unique situation in public life. You, you, of course, you remember that the Prime Minister was uh, an MP, first elected in 93, and he left because uh, he had a young family who was on the other side of the country as well. So there's certainly some sympathy and some empathy about uh, the need for all of us to, uh, to put our kids first. Okay, let's get to the political impact of this, Chris. Moore, of course, was a key player on Harper's front bench. He's now the fifth cabinet minister to announce that he's leaving. Uh, take a look at, at who was who involved, important people. John Baird, that was back in February. Then Shelley Glover bowed out. Christian Paradis and Peter McKay. We're just getting over Peter McKay. And now James Moore is leaving. In all, it's 34 conservative MPs. What does this mean for the party, do you think, Chris? And well, what does he say about that? Yeah, interesting. As you showed those pictures, they all represent different regions of the country. Yeah. McKay from Atlantic Canada, Shelley Glover from Manitoba, John Baird from Ontario, uh, now James Moore from British Columbia, which, as you well know, is going to be one of the hottest political battles sure. in the fall election campaign with new ridings and all three parties competitive. The Conservatives said, as you, uh, their official line is that it's part of renewal. It's not that unusual to have so many people leaving. Uh, but I did ask James Moore about the impact uh, not the least of which is that he's considered to be on the more progressive wing of this government. Here's what he had to say. We were all were led to understand some months ago that the Prime Minister had asked people if they were running again and for a commitment. Um, you're now the fifth cabinet minister since that time to, uh, to announce for, for, for obviously good reasons that you're leaving. So what was his, his reaction? He said it was fine, but what is the impact of losing so many people so close to the beginning of an election campaign? Well, but look, we have, uh, you know, we have an amazing group of candidates, uh, certainly in my home province of British Columbia, great candidates who are all stepping up. You know, the vast majority of our team is running for re-election. The vast majority of cabinet is running for re-election. Uh, I'm kind of unique in the sense that I've been elected since 2000. And most MPs have been elected in 2006 or later. Um, I've been here for 15 years and five terms, uh, and, uh, and my son back home uh, needs a dad. And so it's it's a unique circumstance in that in that regard, uh, but also I've, we've had some news about my son's health quite recently that have made me have to shift and focus and go home. And um, you know when things change, uh, you have to adjust appropriately. And again, uh, this is about the next four years. I can't make a commitment to, to be a member of Parliament until 2019. So are you closing the door, though, to return at some point? I mean, I know that health challenges are, are there. Um, is there a chance that you would be back? You never say never. I mean, I'm 39. I'm not, uh, I'm not old man more. I've been in politics for a long time. I first came here in 1997 as a staffer for Preston Manning. So it's actually 18 years I've been in and around Ottawa, almost half my life, uh, and, and 15 as a member of parliament. So I, uh, you know, who knows what the future holds, but I know that the next chapter of my life uh, is going to be uh, with my family. One last question about the impact of your departure. There are a lot of people who look at John Baird, the, the passing of Jim Flaherty, and now you're leaving. Um, as a sign that the progressive side of this party is not going to be as well represented. What do you say to that? Not true. Look, th th this is a conservative party that is, is broad-based, and we, we're uh, a coalition of people of all kinds of different uh, views on a, number, on a number of issues, but we all are strong fiscal conservatives who believe in law and order, strong national security, and we all believe uh, passionately in the leadership of Stephen Harper. But different views on social sides of things, like same-sex marriage and that. 
Uh, sure, but uh, but there are differing views on those some of those issues and the other political parties as well. Um, but look, that we are um, look. Stephen Harper is going to get reelected, and there are people who are going to have differing views on some of those social issues. It's one of the virtues of the Conservative Party is that we, uh, on matters of moral conscience, we believe in free votes. And you know, I sat two seats over from Stephen Harper when the vote on same-sex marriage came up in Parliament, and um, he applauded when I voted in favor of equal marriage uh, because he understood that for Parliament to work effectively and for people of differing views on difficult social issues um, to be able to express themselves is, is a virtue of the Conservative Party and, uh, and he, he has always represented that. Chris, it doesn't seem like he's done with politics, does it? It seems like the door is open to a potential return sometime maybe. Oh yeah, I, I think he left the door wide open. In fact, he talked about Stephen Harper having stepped aside for family and obviously he came back and is now the Prime Minister of the country. Remember, James Moore is one of the very few flawlessly bilingual members, especially as an Anglophone, uh, inside that Conservative cabinet. Uh, and certainly being able to express uh, what the government wants to do into those communities, particularly in Quebec, uh, that will be missed. But the big thing for me, Terry, was to try and figure out from him what impact it has he leaving uh, on the most important issue confronting British Columbia, which is the future of pipelines. Uh, so I asked him, you know, this is not something that's completed. We had talked last December and he said it really was on the proponents. And here's what he said to that. I want to ask you another question about an agenda that may not yet be finished, and that deals with your home province of British Columbia and the pipelines. Um, when we spoke last December, uh, you indicated that the government had really done all it could to help advance those projects. It was up to the proponents, to Enbridge's and others, to, to carry up that work. When you look now at, at the situation in British Columbia, will those pipelines, do you think, be built? Uh, we'll see. I mean, each project is its own universe of regulation and, and engagement with uh, uh, Coastal First Nations, for example, the Aboriginal community, um, different uh, um, parts in the uh, investment decision process. Um, but I'm, I'm very confident that we're going in the right direction. You saw the, um, you know, the, the Petronas decision to make a not quite a final investment decision, but a final commercial decision, uh, which is the largest uh, foreign investment in the, to the province of British Columbia ever before to stand that up. Uh, you know, we had measures in this year's budget, the uh, accelerated capital cost allowance, specifically for the liquefied natural uh, gas uh, industry, which has been very well received by industry. Uh, but other projects, you know, Kinder Morgan and Enbridge, um, you know, they have their own uh, environmental review process. Kinder Morgan hasn't even begun there. Uh, Enbridge has ended theirs, but now they have um, ongoing conversations with First Nations. So they're all in sort of their own process of um, moving forward. Um, but I, I think it is essential for Canada's economy. It's essential for Alberta's economy and all of Canada's economy to get Canadian commodities to world markets so we can have world prices. The, the United States, as you know, is likely to be energy independent by 2025. Um, so we're going to possibly lose our biggest customer for Canadian energy products. We need to get these products to world markets if we're going to expect to have the quality of life that we want our kids to have. So as you can see, he's, uh, he's not uh, all that optimistic so far about whether they can get these pipelines right. through and certainly losing that effective voice. And if you heard people today talking about James Moore, he was a very good advocate for his province and for the industry brief, which you know, directly includes things such as pipelines. So I think his loss will be keenly felt by the prime minister and the rest of the party. Thanks for this, Chris. Okay, That's the CBC's National Affairs Editor, Chris Hall. And of course, you can listen to the full interview with James Moore on CBC Radio's The House tomorrow. That's tomorrow morning right after the 9 a.m. news, half an hour later in Newfoundland.